uh, what I wanted to discuss was uh, we, uh, this is this is also part of equilibria. It's bronsted lowry acid base uh, theory. Uh, and what what that simply simply uh, uh, is a definition of of what an acid is and what a base is. So, for example, the bronsted lowry acid base theory simply states what's an acid. It's a proton donor. Proton donor, that's it. And <clears throat> what's a base? A base is a proton acceptor. You can remember that. Uh, just remember that it has uh, brossel lowry acid base theory. Uh, uh, that's the proper definition. Uh, not, not anything that produces uh, nothing to do with the uh, OH ions. Because sometimes bases were defined as um, <coughs> molecules. <coughs> they were defined as molecules. That as a sometimes bases were defined as molecules uh, that produced OH ions. Uh, remember uh, that the proper definition is that it has nothing to do with OH ions. It's simply one of them is a proton donor, the other one is a proton acceptor. And it's a very broad definition. It encompasses a lot of molecules. For example, any reaction uh, could be, if you look at a reaction, for example, there's H2SO4 reacting with HNO2 and they end up producing And they end up producing two things. One is HSO4 minus one. The other one is H2NO3 plus one. <coughs> now, if you look at this equation, you would notice uh, what's happening to H2SO4. It's it's losing or producing. It produces H plus one ions. How do you figure out that it produces H plus H plus one ions? That you had H2SO4. On the other side, you have HSO4 minus one. So that means an H plus one ion has been lost or has been produced. So so it's this is your brosillary acid. This is it fulfills the definition of what an acid is. And look at what's happening to it's not HNO2 actually, it's a uh, HNO3. Now look at HNO3. If you look carefully, observe carefully, <coughs> what is the change that's happening to HNO3? You would notice that HNO3 is it accepts in this reaction, it accepts H plus one ions. Uh, why does it accept H plus one ions? Because if you look over here, HNO3, the other side is H2NO3 plus one. So it has definitely accepted H plus one ions. Anything that accepts H plus one ions, that's a base, a brosted lowry. It's a brosted lowry base. So, <coughs> so in any reaction, you're supposed to figure out uh, uh, who's acting as an acid, who's acting as a base based on this th these two definitions. Uh, and we can come up with any reaction. Uh, let's say we have NH4Cl plus NaOH and it produces NaCl 
plus H2O plus NH3. Now, if you look at this reaction very, very carefully, you would notice that, uh, or you notice one thing that there's an NH4 plus one ion right at the beginning. Right, so <coughs> so there's an NH4 plus one ion right at the beginning. It's uh, over here, NH4Cl. It contains NH4 plus one ion. And right at the other side, you have NH3. So what you could realize is that NH4 plus one is losing an H plus one ion. It loses... H plus one ions in the process. Hence, anything that loses H plus one ion that's acting as an acid. So in this reaction, NH4Cl or NH4 plus one is acting as an acid because it loses H plus one ions. And in the same equation, if you look very, very carefully, you would notice that there is an OH ion in NaOH. And that OH ion on the other side is H2O. So that means that on the other side, it changes into H2O. So you would notice that uh, OH ions must have gained an H plus one ions. They must have gained H plus one ions, hence, this NaOH or OH ions are acting as a base. <coughs> so the whole point is that whenever you see any reaction, no matter if it's your conventional acid-base reaction or not, uh, Brosser-Lowry acid-base theory is a very it's it's a it's a very very broad. Sorry, one second. It's a very broad way to describe what an acid and what a what a base is. So, so uh, you have to look out for uh, in any reaction, uh, some substance would be acting as an acid, some other substance might be acting as a as a base. Is this point clear to everyone? Minahil, clear there? Prida, Bhaskar, Sanjeeda, is this clear? Yes. Okay. Okay. Another thing that has to be kept in mind is that acids and bases, they exist in pairs, in conjugate pairs. <coughs> what that means is, look at NH4 plus one. And let's say it's reacting with Cl minus one, right? It is four plus one. Anyways, NH4 plus one acts as an acid, ends up losing an H plus one, forms an H3. And the H plus one is gained by the Cl minus one to form HCl gas, right? So let's say this is this is a reaction that's happening. And this reaction, it's a random reaction, uh, NH4 plus one is acting as an acid. Why? Because it is releasing H plus one ions. It's, it produces H plus one ions. So it's acting. <coughs> it's acting as an acid. Cl minus one on the other hand is changing into HCl. So it, it's accepting an H plus one ion. So it's acting as a base. Why? Because it obviously, in the forward reaction, it accepts H plus one ions. Now, this is in the forward direction. Remember, uh, these reactions, if it's a reversible reaction, it could also happen in the backward direction. Now imagine the same reaction happening in the 
happening in the backward direction. Now, if it happens in the backward direction, then what would these two substances be acting as? <coughs> Look at NH3. NH3 changes to NH4 plus 1 in the backward direction. So NH3 is gaining H plus 1 ions. So it's acting as a base, and that's known as your conjugate base. So that's known as a conjugate base. The word conjugate over here refers to, uh, it just means that, the, that you're talking about the reaction happening in the reverse direction, in the backward direction. And look at what HCl is doing in the backward direction. If you look, look HCl, changes into Cl minus one. So it loses H plus one ions. So it loses H plus one ion. Hence, it's an acid, and it's known as a conjugate acid. So remember what conjugate bases and conjugate acids are. Uh, in the forward direction, you just call them acid and base. <coughs> <coughs> in the backward direction, you refer to them as conjugate bases and conjugate acids. Is this clear to everyone? Yes or no? Is this clear? Yes. I said so. Give you one second. So, uh, so forward acid, you call them acid base. Uh, if you think of the reaction in the backward direction. Conjugate base and conjugate acid. You just need to know how to how to classify an acid and a base. Take anything that produces H plus one, that's a acid. Anything that accepts H plus one ion, that's a that's a base. I said now another concept is, and that concept is that strong acids. Strong acids have weak conjugate bases. And vice versa. What that means is that if you have, for example, if you have HCl, now a lot of you would know <clears throat> a lot of you would know that HCl is uh, probably a strong acid. So it's a strong acid. What does it do? In the forward direction, it loses an H plus 1 ion, gives it to somebody else, and Cl minus 1 is left. So it's a strong acid. So Cl minus 1 would, would be its conjugate base. It's going to have a weak conjugate base. Why is this called the why is this called the conjugate base? The reason it's called a conjugate base is in the backward direction, like in the forward direction, it is obviously producing H plus one ions. But Cl minus one ions in the backward direction would be acting as bases. They it would be gaining H plus one back again. So hence it's known as a conjugate base. So any acid after it has ionized, after it has released H plus one ion, whatever that's left is the conjugate base. I said, so why do strong acids have weak conjugate base? Because that's the, that's the reason the reaction is happening in the forward direction. That it's easier for HCl to ionize and dissociate and produce H plus one ion. So hence, it's behaving as a strong acid. Cl minus one must be a terrible base. Because if it had been a strong base, it would have accept, it would have attracted the H plus one back again and formed HCl back again. And it would have prevented HCl from, from ionizing, right? So HCl being a strong acid, uh, it simply means that HCl ionizes a lot 
it produces H plus one and Cl minus one ions. And that in a way also implies that the Cl minus one ions are terrible bases. Because if they had been strong bases, they would have accepted the H plus one and formed HCl back again and would not have allowed HCl to act as a strong acid. So the only possible way that HCl is behaving as a strong acid is because the base that's being produced is a, it's a terribly weak base. Is this point clear? Is this idea clear? Yes. Is this clear? Yes. And the opposite is also true. For example, ethanoic acid, it's a it's a terrible ethanoic acid is a very weak acid. So ethanoic acid is an acid, so it ionizes, ends up producing CH3CO minus one and ends up releasing an H plus one ion. Now the reason the reaction does not happen or I, the ionization happens very, very weakly is that it's a weak acid. And weak acids always have strong conjugate bases. What this basically means is that the ethanoate ion that is produced, CHCCO minus one ion over here that's produced, attracts the H plus one so strongly that instead of the forward reaction happening, the reaction goes in the backward direction. And it does not allow as anyway, so so the ethroid ions that are produced, <coughs> they have such strong attraction for H plus one that they attract the H plus one back again. And ethroic acid does not ionize, it forms back again. So hence the, the equilibrium is established and the, and the equilibrium is favoring the ethroic acid molecules. It's not allowing the ethroic acid molecules to ionize. So hence it's acting as a weak acid because if it ionizes, ends up producing this ion, it's a strong base and strong bases they in fact accept H plus one ions. Is this clear to everyone? Yes. So, so we, we're going to try and do a few questions related to this, just one second. <coughs> I have these questions. Starting uh, with the, just one second, let me. I said starting with the first one. Just one second. Yeah. Uh, the first question states <coughs> I said now the first question states that why is ethanoic acid a strong a stronger acid in liquid ammonia than in uh, aqua solution? So that's that's the question. Okay, why is ethanoic acid a stronger acid? So you have, let's say you have ethanoic acid and he's saying, why is it a stronger acid in liquid ammonia? Now you have ammonia over here. So that means, uh, what that basically means is that it is acting as an acid with liquid ammonia. So what, what it's going to do is, 
it's going to release an H plus one ion. Right? This is what the question specifically stated that it's behaving as an acid. So it's going to form CH3CO minus one. And ammonia would form NH4 plus one. It would accept H plus one ions. So the ammonia molecules must be must be behaving as a base. So the question was, why is ethanoic acid behaving as a stronger acid? Why is it losing? Why does it loses H? Why 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 is it losing H plus one ions? Now, remember <coughs> when you talk about acids and bases. Uh, a molecule is not going to lose an H plus one ion on its own. There has to be another substance that must be gaining H plus one ions. It's always a pair. Okay, things always happen in pairs. So if one molecule loses H plus one, the other one must be gaining H plus one ions. So the reason ethroic acid would be losing H plus one ions very easily is because NH3 might be gaining those H plus one ions very, very strongly. So A would be the option. The ammonia is probably a stronger base. Uh, that's why ethanoic acid is behaving as a stronger, <coughs> as a stronger acid. Okay, so, so it depends on this base as well. Ethanoic acid is losing H plus one. Why? Because Ammonia, on the other hand, is strongly trying to gain H plus one ions. Okay, so is this clear? Basga, is this clear? Minahil, clear? Yes, sir. Yes. I said next one. You have uh, question number thirty-six. You have uh, uh, there's a reaction happening. This is the reaction that's happening. And he's asking, first thing, is ammonia behaving as a base? Uh, if you look carefully, you will notice that there is NH3 at one side, left hand side, there's NH3 over here. And there is NH4 plus one. So in this reaction, NH3 is changing into NH4 plus one. So it is behaving as a base, why? Because it is accepting H positive ions. So it is behaving as a base. The other, other is related to redox reactions. We can uh, try and do that as well. <coughs> I said that we can do that as well. NH3, the oxidation state of NH3 is uh, what? Uh, H is plus one. So N must be minus three. Cl is zero over here. N is zero over here. N is definitely minus three. In NH4 plus one, you can have a go at this. And Cl is minus one. So ammonia behaves as a reducing agent. What's happening to ammonia? It goes from minus three to zero. So it's getting oxidized. Right, it's getting oxidized. Uh, nitrogen is zero. N in NH3 is uh, minus three. So it is getting oxidized. Anything that's oxidized is is the is the reducing agent, and the oxidation number of hydrogen changes. It's not changing. H is plus one. H is plus one over here as well. H is always plus one, unless it's an element and it's neutral. So this is incorrect. As so this question, which statement best explains why this reaction should be classified as a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reaction? The ammonium ion acts as a proton donor. So ammonium ion, on the other side, it's ammonia. So ammonium ion is changing into, so they are losing H plus one ions. So that is correct, it's, it's acting as a base. Not a base, sorry. Anything that loses H plus one ion, that's an acid. It's acting as an <coughs> it's acting as an acid. The next is um, NaCl is a salt. Now remember, Brossard-Lowry acid-base theory has nothing to do with with 
salts that was not a uh, part of the definition it was simply uh, you just have to figure out if something loses h plus 1 or something gains h plus 1 that's what bronsted lowry it's it's only gain or loss of h plus 1 ions it has nothing to do if a salt is produced or not produced we don't really care so so it has nothing to do with salt and ammonia is always basic now in this question you can see ammonia forming this NH2 minus one ion so ammonia can like if, even if you look at this there's ammonia and there's NH2 minus one so let's say ammonia changes into NH2 minus one so that means it has lost H plus one ion so it's acting as an acid so it's not always going to be basic <coughs> and this is what we have figured out from the reaction that NH2 minus one ions can also be can also be produced so and if it does that it would be acting as a as an asset not a base let's leave this as this one now the question is that uh, I said, remember one thing that there's pH seven in the middle, right? Less than seven is acidic. Greater than seven is basic. But remember that uh, on the pH scale, to give all, all, all uh, we haven't done pH scale. That's an A two. But on the pH scale. If an acid is has a pH of six and a base has a pH of eight, they have the same strength. They have equal strength. What that basically means is that they're going to ionize exactly the same, except for the fact that a base does the opposite of what an acid does. But the strength of uh, the acid would be equivalent to the strength of the base. Like if you have an eight here. And you have a base which is any which. So, <coughs> so equal strength means that if if x number of molecules of HCl are going to ionize, x number of molecules of any which are also going to ionize. Nee, it's I'm saying the strength. Uh, let me explain this. And let me. So let me explain this in a bit. Nikam, pH six. The other side is pH six. I said, let me quickly explain to you what's happening. Okay, I'll, I'll just give you a very brief overview of what pH is. I said, now remember that pH is the negative log of the concentration of H plus ions. TK. Now this is not in your course yet. In it's in A2. TK will do do this next year. As a pH is the negative log of the concentration of H plus ions. So let's say I have HCl and HCl completely ionizes. Uh, and I have 0 0.1 mole per dm cube. HCl. So the amount of H plus ions that would be produced in the solution would be 0 0.1 mole per decimeter cube. <coughs> so this is the amount of H plus one ions that would be produced in the solution. I say, anyways, what what is negative log? Log simply expresses the uh, expresses the concentration or any value in the powers of ten. So if you take the log of this uh, 0 0.1, this is 10 to the power of minus one, that would be 0 0.1. So if you do this on your calculator, your, your value, your pH is going to come out to be equal to, it would come out to be equal to one. Uh, because 10 to the power, uh, express this value in, uh, in the power of 10, 
and there's a minus sign so the minus sign gets cancelled out the value comes out to be ph is equal to one <coughs> so anyways my point is now this is a strong acid so this is the concentration of h plus one ions in the solution right so when it comes to bases like you have a base any which a base pretty much does the same thing except that it does not produce uh, h plus one ions it instead produces oh ions now if it has the same strength if it's also a strong strong base stream the, the word strength here indicates it simply implies will it ionize how much will it ionize so if it's 0.1 mole per dm cube the oh ions are also going to be 0.1 mole per dm cube and then uh, if you try to calculate the one second <coughs> But if you try to calculate the pH of this, the way you calculate the pH of this is uh, you instead take the negative log of OH ions. And you get, uh, this, is called, this is called POH, and you get one as well. I say anyways, my, and, and there's, a, there's, a, there's a rule that pH plus POH is equal to 14. So you subtract from 14, you get pH, which is coming out to be 13. I said, anyways, my only point is when we talk about strength, we talk about how much it's ionizing. Like a base produces OH ions, the acid produces H plus 1 ions. But the degree of ionization is exactly the same. You get 0.1 mole per dm cube of H plus 1 ions, and you get 0.1 mole per dm cube of OH ions as well. So when you look at pH 7, pH 7 is your neutral point. Beyond that, the OH ions quantity increases. Like if, if you go to pH 13 or pH 14 and below this, uh, the H plus 1 quantity increases in the solution. My point was, if you're equidistant from pH 7, like you're at this point, let's call this pH 9. And there's this point, let's call this pH 5. <coughs> Although they are totally different things. Over here, you have OH ions. Over here, you have H plus 1 ions. But the strength of the base and the strength of the acid would be exactly the same, which basically means the concentration of OH ions and the concentration of H plus 1 ions in the solution would be the same. Do you get this point? Bakio clear, Basga, Minahil, Sandita, is this clear? Yes, sir. Yes. So, my only point is that although uh, above pH 7, you're basically talking about bases, uh, below pH 7, you're talking about, uh, about, as about acidic environment, but the strength depends on how far away from the pH 7 position you are. Okay, the further you are, like if there's a base at P and it has a pH of 13 and there's an acid which has a pH of 1, they're going to have exactly the same degree of ionization. I mean, the acid would produce H plus 1 ions, the base would produce uh, OH ions. I mean, they're inherently going to produce different things. But the degree of ionization in the solution would be exactly, exactly the same. Actually, so this question, coming back to this question, now he's saying that uh, there's pH 6 and there's pH 9. pH 6 is definitely going to be weaker compared to, I mean, pH 6 would ionize less. pH 9 would be relatively stronger, although pH 9 would be, would be a base, but it's going to ionize more.
ठीक है इट्स मच फर्दर वे फ्रॉम सेवन सो द स्टूडेंट क्यू पी कंक्लूडेड दैट एक्स इज अ स्ट्रॉन्ग एसेड व्हिच इज डेफिनेटली रॉन्ग इट्स इट इज एन एसेड बट इट्स अ वेरी वेरी वीक एसेड स्टूडेंट क्यू कंक्लूडेड दैट द एक्सटेंट ऑफ डिसोसिएशन इज लोअर इन एक्स देन इन वाई so dissociation is lower in x so student q is definitely correct y is going to ionize more it has a ph which is much further away from 7 so q uh, the extent of dissociation or ionization is going to be higher in x or lower in x sorry so only q is going to be the correct option Uh, next question which statement are correct in terms of brosnan lowry acids and bases water can act as either an acid or a base do you remember that water can act as both it's amphoteric that water molecules have these lone pairs and it's capable of attracting h plus one ions and directly bonding to them so it can act as an as a base and we all know that it can always lose an h plus one ions <coughs> next one is uh, sulfuric acid does not behave as an acid when dissolved in ethanol uh when dissolved in ethanol h2so4 and the ammonium ion act as a base when dissolved in theek hai this one is definitely incorrect uh, and let me explain why this is incorrect because we haven't sulfuric acid does not behave as an acid it does behave as an acid why because uh, remember ethanol ethanol has oh o has these lone pairs so if sulfuric acid produces h plus one ions there has to be someone out there gaining h plus one ions so there's going to be the lone pairs on ethanol would be would be attracting the h plus one ions so it is possible that sulfuric acid would lose an h plus one ions ethanol on the other hand would be gaining h plus one ions so so ethanol with its lone pairs is capable of gaining h plus 1 so sulfuric acid would be behaving as an acid and ammonium ions act as a base ammonium they don't act as bases they actually lose h plus 1 ions and anything that loses h plus 1 ion that's a that's classified as an acid so it's this is also incorrect and is this clear to everyone yes yes so we will um we'll continue with this theek hai next class mein kal hopefully karte hain theek hai we'll continue with the same worksheet and try and do a few more questions theek hai okay take care love is